The following story and photos are from Giant Panda King's book, Gotham 1919-1939, by Russell S. Beatty. Viewer discretion is advised. And so I'm leaving this message. I want my final words to be this. During the Wall Street crash of 1929, many felt that they had lost everything. While businessmen jumping from buildings was more of a widespread rumor than fact, there were still an unfortunate few who did tragically make that choice. One such affected person was one Victor Zaz. Zaz was an investor in all sorts of mercantile dealings, and the stock market crash devastated him and countless others. He felt an extremely intense despair at this news and decided to jump from his office building. He shared a building with a lawyer and a few other businessmen. When he arrived at the seventh story ledge of the office, he was shocked to see another man already standing there. The man was older and a familiar face. The man's name was George Carver, a 65-year-old owner of a wholesale produce firm. They had business dealings in the past. Carver was clearly distraught. Zaz thought that he didn't want to go through with it. Something snapped within Zaz at that moment. His intense despair turned into an intense, empty pit in his stomach. He felt a coldness and a resolve rise within him as he walked up behind the man. Zaz approached the open window behind the ledge. Carver turned to look at him just in time to see Zaz push him gently. Carver toppled off the ledge and impacted an automobile on the street below. Zaz left hurriedly, taking to the streets of New York. He did not know why this urge had risen within him, but he knew something for sure. He wanted to feel that rush again. Years later, a string of murders began in Gotham City. The victims were often found either having fallen from high places or with their throats slashed by a straight razor. Police were stumped and could not find enough of a pattern to determine the identity of the killer. In a time before criminal profiling, law enforcement was stumped. They turned to the Bat Team for assistance. Red Wing and the Spoiler took on the case, finding it suited to their skill sets. With the recent appearance of spree killers like Professor Pig and the Calendar Man, Red Wing and Spoiler felt that there was a new type of criminal surfacing in Gotham. In order to gain an understanding of what they were up against, they turned first to their allies. They got some helpful information from their allies, but most of them were handling cases of their own. Even the files from previous cases weren't much help to the duo. They were missing a key element, how to get inside the mind of the killer they were tracking. With the realization of this missing element, Red Wing and Spoiler turned to an unlikely source for assistance. They went to Blackgate Penitentiary and sought out the one man who could give them insight into the killer. They went to Edward Nigma, the Riddler. The years had not been kind to Nigma. He had been assigned to the caretaking of the prison library. His anger and resentment at being incarcerated had seemingly boiled down to nothing but boredom. This boredom was suddenly alleviated with the arrival of these two visitors. Nigma listened to the case and gladly gave his insight to Red Wing and the Spoiler. This collaboration between Red Wing, the Spoiler, and the Riddler laid some of the groundwork for what would later become criminal profiling it would be referenced and taught by law enforcement for years to come. Armed with fresh insights into the mind of a killer, Red Wing and the Spoiler determined some tentative details about the killer they were tracking. The killer was likely not from Gotham, as the murders had only begun recently, and bore similarity to some murders in New York. The killer was likely a man, 
His murders bore characteristics of multiple other male murderers in Gotham and other cities. The killer was also an impulse killer. The pool of his victims seemed to hold no specific pattern to them. They also determined that he might collect trophies of some kind, mementos of his kills. These analyses were all made with the help of Edward Nigma and were instrumental in helping locate the killer. After one final session with Nigma, Red Wing and the spoiler had a mostly complete profile of their spree killer. They set out to find a suspect. The murders took place in the Tricorner District, so the masked vigilantes staked it out in the following days. After hours and hours of waiting, their patience paid off. An individual attacked someone in the street late one night. Red Wing and the spoiler confronted the man, but were not prepared for the grisly sight that turned to face them. The man was covered from head to toe in scars, all making crude tally marks across his flesh. The man's eyes had a fire of desperation and madness to them as he yelled and charged at them with a knife. The two vigilantes took the man down after a brief battle. After bringing him to the authorities, they learned that his name was Victor Zaz. Zaz claimed that each tally mark on his skin was a kill, a poor soul who needed freeing from the pain of existence. Red Wing and the Spoiler were disgusted with Zaz and his twisted ideologies. Before they could do much else, they received word suddenly. There was an escape attempt happening at Blackgate Penitentiary. During his interviews with Red Wing and the Spoiler, Edward Nigma had been plotting. He was bored with the monotony of prison life and tired of being constrained. By being cooperative, he had lowered the guards of the costume vigilantes. In doing so, and by exhibiting good behavior, he had also lulled the guards into a false sense of security. After Nigma's final session with Red Wing and the Spoiler, he swiped a guard's key as they led him back to his cell. He freed his hands and strangled the guard to death. He swapped uniforms with the guard and exited the visiting area. As guards rushed past him into the room, Nigma walked right past them towards freedom. Alarm bells sounded and Nigma exited the penitentiary. He moved towards an unattended prison vehicle as rain began to fall. Nigma began fiddling with the lock on the door of the car. He managed to open it, just as a voice sounded out above him. Looking to the roof of the vehicle, he saw Red Robin crouched on top of it. The spoiler stepped up behind him. Nigma begrudgingly put his hands up as the two apprehended him once again. While Nigma may have been a threat, he had helped the vigilantes put an even bigger one behind bars. Zaz, now in police custody, stood trial for the murders he had committed. Being deemed criminally insane, he was sentenced to Arkham Asylum. Many called for the death penalty, but the judge stood firm on the sentencing. Zaz was too unstable. Red Wing and the Spoiler would continue building rapport as crime fighters. Years later, the work they had done developing a profile on Zaz would influence the Behavioral Science Unit's approach in the FBI. The events of this case would also inspire author Thomas Harris to write the book, The Silence of the Lambs. Red Wing and the Spoiler had brought a killer to justice, and Gotham thanked them for it. The city was safe again, for now. <laughs>